right, family. We're blessed for, to be before you once again. My name is Brother Zebulon from the Nation of Islam, Philadelphia, Moss number 12. We implore you to always check out your local mosque. Uh, we thank you for allowing us to come into your homes once again. And we want to start off properly like we always do in the most holy name of Allah. We thank Allah for appearing to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi. We thank him for raising from among us the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as his messenger Messiah. And we are learning more and more today the fulfillment of scripture, the exalted Christ. We also thank Allah and bear witness that the two of those men filled with the spirit of the originator of the heavens and the earth has prepared for us one who is functioning as a Christ figure, as a Messiah figure, an anointed one who is our divine warner, our divine teacher today, and our guide that is guiding us into all truth. And that one is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in their names that we'd like to greet you in the Nation of Islam's greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Family, what we want to do is not leave a video behind like we they would talk before in the school system. They would say none left behind. But on this page and in this time and in this nation, we say no topic of discussion left behind. So no subject left behind. And with saying that, our subject today that we will not leave behind, my spirit would not allow me to move further with new topics of discussion until I finished the one that we started entitled, Allah God Comes After the Workings of Satan. That was a video that was weighing heavy on my mind and spirit, and I could not go another minute without delivering that message in sharing that message that Almighty God Allah put on my heart with you, family. So we did that video, my daughter and I, before I started work. I start work at 10 o'clock. I think we started around 9.30 and we got as much out as we could, but we left a lot out. And what we wanna do with this particular video is go further and finish where we left off. So we want to deal with a few questions that we didn't get a chance to answer in the last video. Uh, one of those questions, I have it here on the board, was how will God come? And the second question was, what would be the sign of his coming? And of course, the third is, uh, will he come as a man? or as a spirit? Mm. And the last question, inshallah, we will be able to answer all four of these questions would be, what will he do? What will he, Allah, do? So what we wanna do is give quick answers and then we'll parse through the answer that Allah puts on us to share. But of course, when we ask the question, how will he come? We alluded to it in a video before that we already established the groundwork for part two, which is this video that we're in now, or sharing now. He would not come on a horse flying in midair. He would not come as a fictional or a man riding on a fictional uh, dragon or any type of Greek mythology, that would be parables, metaphors, and uh, symbolic language that would be really describing a reality that we pray to Allah and that, that we will be able to represent properly today, the actual facts of exactly how Allah would come. We are taught that he would come. You know, Brother Zebulon can't talk too long without going to a scripture. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, I believe it's chapter 20, verse, verse 26. 
it talks about literally family, the wheel, the wheel, a subject that people made mockery out of or tried to anyway, and ridiculed the nation of Islam for the teachings that was given to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and now through the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Praise be to Allah. It says it right here. We can start with verse. Uh, let's start with verse 24 of chapter 20 in the book of Proverbs. It says, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Hmm. It is a snare to the man who devoureth that which is holy and after vows to make inquiry. A wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. And we can stop right there. Hmm. I'll read that verse again. A wise king scattereth the wicked and bringeth the wheel over them. Now, we are taught by the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad that when we say wheel, we're dealing with the wheel of Ezekiel, the wheel that Ezekiel envisioned. This is being seen all over the planet today. And this is being acknowledged by all the great nations and all of the great kings. They're acknowledging a science and a technology that is superior to their science and technology, a mighty king on a mighty throne that is in the world today. In the nation of Islam, our paper, our final call newspaper, I have it right here. A paper that I've pointed out before, a paper uh, on March 28, 2023, dealing with the U.S. government officials admitting the reality of the so-called UFOs with a new report referring to the existence of the mothership, look at the language family, that released many small probes, once again proving and confirming that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is right and exact. Family, we, make, we, want, we implore you to subscribe to the Final Call newspaper and make sure you get your weekly edition so you can stay on top of things. But moving a little further to the next question because that is the quick answer to the first question, how will he come? He would come in great glory and he would come with power, but he would come on a physical, man-made, mechanical uh, ship that would be made with his science, his mind, and his might that would be light years away from the technology that we know of today. And the second question, what would be the sign of his coming? Well, the Bible and the Holy Quran teaches that it would be a, a, a sign in the sun, moon, and stars that there will be a sign in the sun, moon, and stars. And take note, these answers, we're gonna go back over, but we wanna, and we're gonna put scripture with them. But for now, we just wanna to touch on these uh, questions with a quick answer, diligently, so that we can take our time, but at least we will be able to touch on each one because each one of these questions, a whole lecture it would take to explain the intricate details of the answer. But what would be the sign of his coming? In short, a people that would be reduced to dust, a people that would be afflicted for 400 years, that would be the sign that was given to Abraham. But those people, our people, our ancestors who were brought to this 
wicked nation would be stripped and robbed and reduced to nothing. We would lose our language, our culture, our religion, our God, and we would literally lose our minds. So with that, how would he, God Allah, repair that damage and restore the people that were distorted? The first thing he would have to do is reconnect us to him. And we are taught that the Latin root of the word religion is ligament. So he would come with the right ligament, also known as religion, to link us back to the right God, which would be himself, the originator of the heavens and the earth that's living right inside Al-Mahdi, the man that he would come in the person of. So with the third question, Will he come as a man or a spirit? I just touched on that. We know that if he came as a spirit, that would be a contradiction because a spirit we know is omnipresent. So how can a spirit come to a place that it's already present in? So it would have to be, and Allah, it would have to be, or Allah would reveal to us the full actual facts and truth of him manifesting himself in a human being that he would be able to come from the east to the west all right family he would come as a man but not just the type of man that we are acquainted with this man would be god in the person what would make him god in the person this man would have power over the forces of nature. He would have force and power to destroy this wicked world and to reestablish, or not even reestablish, but build a new reality and a new kingdom right here on this same planet that was formed by the originator. Mm, the power that would be backing al -Mahdi. And of course, he would do this through his Christ, another man. And all of the men are present. The al Mahdi, we are taught in al Masi, the Messiah, is on the wheel right now. And like it said in scripture, Jesus talking, the prophet prophesying uh, and giving us prophetic utterances, he would say that he would not leave us comfortless. And the Holy Quran and the Bible back that up with the word reminder, divine reminder. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is that divine reminder. Al Farrakhan, the warner to the nations, the criterion, the way to get to Allah, God, and his Christ. You would have to go through the divine reminder, the criterion, the perfect FOI, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The discrimination is how that chapter even starts up, chapter 25, and by the grace of Allah, we'll touch on that too. And it leaves us now with uh, the fourth question, what will he do? The beautiful thing about these answers, family, is they're answering the question before we even ask them. And we thank Allah for coming to us and teaching us the knowledge of ourselves because who are we that God would want to do all of these things? So what would he do? He would give life to the, to the dead. He would establish a government of righteousness and peace. What would be the sign? Us being restored and receiving our religion back in giving us a universal flag of Islam, a flag that is fulfillment of the sign that we would have the sun, moon, and stars as our national flag, our universal flag that represents freedom, justice, and equality. And of course, all three are components that we receive once we accept our true religion, which is Islam. All praise is due to Allah. 
So with that family, we want to start bringing some scripture to this. The Holy Quran tells us of the right religion. And of course, the right religion, as a Muslim, we would say, would be Islam. So let us see if we can back that up with scripture before we go back over those questions with scripture and we can close this video out, part two, the proper way and move on with the many, many titles that Allah has given uh, your humble brother. We have a video entitled One Speaks with Authority. We have another video called Don't Say Three. And I should be saying this with, with my final thought at the end of the video, but I'm so excited about what Allah is putting on us to share. We have another video called Who's Who in the Bible? Who's Who in the Bible? That's gonna be dealing with not only the men or the people of the book, but it's gonna be dealing with the metaphors and dealing with even the idioms, some people pronounce it idioms, talking about the sheep, the goat, talking about the, the uh, fruit, the good fruit, the bad fruit, going into what exactly is the serpent represented. We talked on these things before, but we can never go over it enough because once we understand these things, then all the other scriptures open itself up when we open ourselves up to the man in our midst today. So that leads me to the other video that I want to say, which is the final one. Uh, don't say three. It would be better for you. Well, Allah makes it so that we always get one at a time. And that one is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan today. So family, we are here in chapter three, dealing with that religion of Allah, verse uh, 19, or really 17. No, I had it right, 19 and 20. So we wanna go ahead and read this uh, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Verse 19 says, Surely the true religion with Allah is Islam. You can't get any more decisive than that. And those who were given the book differ or differed only after knowledge had come to them. Out of envy among themselves, and whosoever disbelieves, Whosoever disbelieves in our messages of Allah, Allah indeed is quick at re reckoning, judging, rewarding, punishing. He would be quick at reckoning. Verse 20 says, but if they dispute with thee, say, I submit myself entirely to Allah, and so does he who follows or who follows me. And say to those who have been given the book and the unlearned people, do you submit yourselves? If they submit, they indeed, then indeed they follow the right way. Let me read that again. If they submit, then indeed they follow the right way. And if they turn back, thy duty is only to deliver the message. And Allah is seer of the servants. All praise is due to Allah. We are taught that the definition of Islam is total submission to the will of Allah. And others say that Islam represents peace. And we say the same thing, but they can, there can be no peace without obedience to Allah's will. So with that family, we wanna move a little further and deal with these questions. How will God come? Mm. 
he would come from the east to the west to seek and save that which was lost. Well, in the Bible, there's a couple of scriptures that say just that. One scripture in the book of Matthew, you might as well do it in order, is Matthew chapter 24, verse 27, and I believe 28. This scripture is the oft-repeated scripture in the nation of Islam because it is a pivotal scripture that cannot be misinterpreted after Allah God gave meaning to this scripture. But of course, before his coming, before his coming, the meaning could not have been as clear as it is today. It says here, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is there, where will the eagles be gathered together? So he would come from the east and he would come over here to the west. This is how he would come. And he would come, like the scripture said, alone by himself, seeking no reputation. Mm -mm -mm. And we already said that he would seek and save that which was lost. And that is in Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. And also Matthew, no, no, no. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Scripture that we talked about in the other video, but the numbers are so significant. And like I said, we want to go further before we close out this topic. But Matthew 18, 11 says, for the son of man is come to save that which was lost. Now, of course, in Luke, it says that he comes to seek and save that which was lost. A man who would be a seeking man. The Bible says that he would come as a man. The Holy Quran says that he would have power. This man that he would prepare with, this is God talking, his two hands would be a man that we would have to submit to. Even the angels, the Holy Quran tells us. So we in the nation of Islam, by the grace of Almighty God Allah, for raising up his saviors, are right and exact. So chapter, oh, I went right back. Uh, Luke chapter 19, 10. The numbers represent the time that our Savior actually came. He came in 19, 10 to study the enemy. Because when you give us knowledge of self, that would be a major message to give of salvation and also, we would have to have a knowledge of God. And lastly, a knowledge of our enemy. And of course, a knowledge of God is always first and foremost. But you have no real knowledge of God when you have no real knowledge of self. It says in 1 John chapter 4, how can you love God whom you never seen and hate your brother who you see every day? So here it is in uh, chapter 19 of the book of Luke, verse 10. For the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. All praise is due to Allah. So he would come as a man, but of course he would have to come through the womb of a woman, fulfilling scripture, the scripture of Isaiah, for unto us a child is born and for unto us a son is given. 
Isaiah chapter 9, but without the fulfillment of scripture, like it says in Galatians chapter 4, if we were not living in the fullness of time, then we would fall short with the prophecies. So even though this world teaches that that scripture in Isaiah 9 was fulfilled with Jesus the Christ or Jesus the prophet of 2,000 years ago, because that's what he was, Jesus the prophet would tell you himself that it would be many things that he could tell you, but we could not bear it and that we would have to wait for the comfort of the, for the comforter to be sent by Allah. And Jesus said he would, when the other comforter would come, there's many things that I can tell you, but you cannot bear it now. How be it or however, when he comes, when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. All truth cannot come before the fullness of time. Galatians 4.4. 4. And we are taught that the four represents foundation. And before God can build the foundation of his kingdom, the fullness of time would have to come. We would have to be here longer than the six days that God said would take to build this hellish world that we're living in, living in today. But since I'm right here, I just want to quote that verbatim because we definitely don't want to make any mistakes. And even if we make a mistake, we pray to Allah to uh, help us to be excused from any mistakes and point it out so that we can fix it. Because in the nation of Islam, we believe that mistakes must not exist. But here it is, all praise is due to Allah. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Well, how will he come? He would have to come. Hmm in the form of a man. So in the book of Hebrews, it says that a body would be um, formed. Look at the language. A body would have to be prepared rather before all of this can take place. So Hebrews chapter, and Hebrews always hides from me, but I'll find it. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse uh, five, it says here, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, okay? But a body hast thou prepared. Who prepared? Allah prepared that body. And we're going to give a little context to that. But why would a body have to be prepared? And why would the scripture say that the sacrifice of these men would not be correct? Sacrifice and offering. Thou wouldest not. Right? Well, a man would have to come and teach us how to give the proper sacrifice. The law would not be fulfilled until love would be applied. And love could not be taught without God himself teaching it. The Bible in the book of Romans chapter 10 says, how will they know unless they have a teacher? And how will they have a teacher unless one, unless one be sent? The scriptures even go further. In the book of Exodus chapter 34, God himself recognizing that the shepherds would be selfish, niggardly with wisdom and knowledge. So Allah would say, woe to the shepherds who feed themselves and not the flock. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? So Allah declares that he himself would come and search them out and seek them out and feed his sheep and find his sheep that would be lost. All of this 
is fulfilled in this hour. So like the scriptures are constantly uh, through the voice of the prophets are always uttering the terms, the hour of God is near, the day of the Lord is near. Well, in the Nation of Islam with our five final call ministry, we are declaring that the day of the Lord is here. And we are in this day right as we speak the only way you cannot recognize the time and what must be done or the time and the way we should be living in this time, the only way you would not be able to recognize this is if we are indeed deaf, dumb, and blind. And that is exactly what we're dealing with. So the first work of the nation of Islam is the resurrection of the dead, not getting stores, not getting markets even, or even farmland, and having a bunch of properties all over the earth, that will come when life is breathed into our nostrils. But we cannot get life breathed into us if we reject the life giver. And the life giver today is the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan. Make no mistake about it, family. So let's move a little further. This man would come, because it says here, what would be the sign of his coming? We touched on that. And will he come as a man or a spirit? As we are a little further than our halfway mark and start to wind our video down, let us look at some scriptures that prove that he would come as a man. I believe in Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42 is dealing with just that. A man that would be God. Uh, the Bible teaches us in Psalms 82 verse 6. That ye are all gods. Children of the most high God. The Holy Quran chapter 15 talks about a man. That would be formed. And the inspiration of the spirit of Allah would be breathed into him. Mm. Let's go there, family. Let's go there. Before we jump into the Bible with this man, proving that Allah would come in his greatest creation called man. But I just want to deal with this uh, spirit of the Lord. Here we are in the Holy Quran, chapter 15. The rock, the foundation. Hmm. Verse 29, it says, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. So when I have made him complete, now this is Allah talking. When I have made him complete and breathed into, and we know breath is inspiration, breathed into him of my spirit, my is with a capital M, fall down making obeisance to him. So the angels made obeisance to this man that Allah put his spirit in. We don't have to go all into that and belabor that point, but man, oh man, Allah would come to us as a mighty man, not just any old man, but the type of man that we are not used to seeing. So here we are in Isaiah chapter 42. I want to go to verse 13, and it's really from 13 to 25. Verse 13 says, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Now let's look at this, because we are taught with the Holy Bible, of course, the linguistics of English, which is a bastard religion. Nothing like our natural tongue, which is Arabic. But because it's such a weak uh, language, a language that doesn't even have a name for God, it uses uppercase and lowercase to describe the difference between the originator of the heavens and the earth and someone who is sent by the originator of the heavens and the earth, Jesus the Christ, 
So if it's referring to Jesus, it'll call Jesus Lord, but it'll be a capital L, lowercase O-R-D, like we said many times before. But we can never say it enough because we never know who's watching for the first time. But in this verse is replacing the name of Allah with these capital letters. It's in all capital letters. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. I don't understand how people can look at us like we're so crazy when we say that God is a man and we cannot see him as being anything other than such. When there's so many scriptures that's pointing to just that. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Mm. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies, which are our enemies if we are with that man. All right? Well, let's go to the book of uh, Exodus because that was the book of Isaiah. But in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 15, no, chapter 15, verse 3. Come on, Exodus, here we go, right here. More man talk, family. And of course, in the nation of Islam, we are not spiritually chauvinistic. So when we say man, we mean it just like Allah means it. Male and female created he them and called them and their names, Adam, the male and the female. A generation of Adam, like it says in the uh, book of Genesis chapter 5. A generation of Adam. Okay. Verse 3 says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Well, we have to make a minor adjustment because of our back page of the final call, what the Muslims believe. We believe in the truth of the Bible, but we believe that it has been tampered with mm, and must be reinterpreted so that man will not be uh, snared, trapped by the falsehoods that's been added to it or even the falsehoods that's been taken out of it, like the name of Allah. All right, family? Well, as we close, mm, we want to deal with a couple more scriptures. We want to go to the Holy Bible. I mean, the Holy Quran, excuse me. In chapter 3, verse 26. Because another question we have, what will he do? And that's that fourth and final question. What will he do? Oh, man. He would take the last and make it the first, but he would take the kingdom from whom he pleases and give it to another who will bear its fruits. Well, in the Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 26, it says, Say, O Allah, owner of the kingdom, thou givest the kingdom to whom thou pleaseth, and takest away the kingdom from whom thou pleasest. And thou exaltest whom thou pleasest and abasest whom thou pleasest. In thine hand is the good. Surely thou art possessor of power over all things. This is the book of scripture of the Muslims. Section four in the same chapter is entitled Last Members of a Chosen Race. Last Members of a Chosen Race people and that's a whole topic for another time we want to get a, give a, a find a corresponding scripture to what we just read in the holy quran chapter 3 verse 26 we go to matthew chapter 21 verse 43 and let's see how these scriptures correspond and let's see how harmonious allah's word is when we have all of the revelations. The Quran, I believe in chapter five, verse 68, it says you follow nothing good until you observe the Torah, which is what we just did. And the gospel, that's where we at right now. And the book. You 
follow no good family until you observe the Torah and the gospel and the book that was revealed to thee, O Muhammad. All right, so here we are, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. It says, oh man, I have to go up to 42. What would he do? Why would he come? Or how will he come? Right? And what even would be a sign of his coming and all of this stuff, but what will he do? Verse 42 says, Jesus saith unto them, the Jews that he was talking to, the Jews that he was threatening, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doings, and it is marvelous in our sight. I believe David uttered somewhat the same words. Mm. I believe that's in uh, Psalms 110, but it's the same words and right up in there toward the end of the book of Psalm. Our prim primary verse is 43. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bring it forth the fruits thereof. Right? Oh, praise is due to Allah. In the book of Ezekiel, it says, not Ezekiel, Exodus, our enemies that we're taught of so thoroughly would deal wisely with us. It says in the first chapter of Exodus, come and let us deal wisely with them. But once you get to Psalm chapter 83, let's go there. Because like we just read, about a nation that Allah God would take the kingdom from and give to another. Psalm chapter 83. Be there in a minute. Here we are. Mm. It says that that God, Allah, or, or Pharaoh talking, and I'm looking for, here it is here in verse four. They have said, this is Pharaoh, this is the wicked people. This is our enemy, our open enemy, the Holy Quran refers to him as. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more, will be no more in remembrance. And like the minister told us many times before, he asked the question, the powerful question, who are the real children of Israel? The real children of Israel would be the people that Allah would come and give the nation to, give the kingdom to that nation, that real nation, that real children of Israel. He would take it from the ones who were not real take it from the ones who stole the kingdom, who tricked the uh, God's original people out of the birthright and literally stole the blessing. Thinking that they can get away with that, we know, and we are living it now. We are in the middle of the changing of worlds, family. All praise is due to Allah. So as we close this great topic out, this topic of discussion, I want to touch on some scriptures as a final thought a book that my beloved mother uh, left me a, a notebook that has a little place for me to put my pens there I have so many notes but this particular book with the gold lettering my mother worked for the government it reminds me of the Holy Quran so I put or use this particular book to uh, mm, write down all my scriptures that I run into dealing with Master Far Muhammad, the great Mahdi. So in this book, and we're not going to have time. One day we may do a video about that. 
but we're not going to have time to be able to go through all the scriptures. This book is not even dealing with the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad or the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan. This particular book, I dedicated, dedicated it to Master Farad Muhammad and all the many scriptures that's right in this book, the Bible, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used to make a nation of Islam right here in the West. Like it says in both books, that Allah would come from the East to the West. Mm. I read that scripture, Matthew 24, but let's see what the Holy Quran says before we close out, family. In the Holy Quran, uh, let's see, let's see. Chapter two. Oh man, hold on for a second. For the sake of time, we're gonna move fast. Praise be to Allah for notes. Chapter two, I'm right there. Verse 258. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Has thou not thought of him who disputed with Abraham about his Lord because Allah had given him the kingdom? When Abraham said, my Lord, is he? No. When Abraham said, my Lord, is he who gives life and causes to die? Mm, I mean, this is like a puzzle, family. It never stops. My Lord or Abraham said, my Lord is he who gives life and causes death. Mm, reminds me of the Jacob and Esau story. <laughs> he said, I give life and I cause death. Abraham said, surely Allah causes the sun to rise from the east. So do thou make it rise. So do thou make it rise from the west? Hmm. Now I'm reading that with a question mark, but it's not a question mark. Let me read that again. Allah causes the sun to rise from the east. So do thou make it rise from the west. Thus, he who disbelieved was confounded and Allah guides not the unjust people. All praise is due to Allah. We're taught that the Muhammad of this Bible or this Holy Quran, excuse me, has a hadith, hadith kutsi. And in the hadith, he said that the light would go out in the east and reshine in the west. We know that even though Allah can do whatever he pleases, he doesn't do certain things. So I don't like to say that Allah can't. We never say what Allah can't do. We say what Allah doesn't do. We hear people say that Allah can't lie. I always like to share with people, if you can lie and I can lie, and we are so much weaker than Allah. Why do you think that that mighty man, Allah, and the person of a man can't lie to? We just recognize the truth of him being a truth teller, almighty God Allah. He doesn't lie. Not that he can't lie. He doesn't go against nature. He doesn't break his own law, even though he can. He submits to the law that he created. All oh, praise be to Allah. And he does this in the form of a man. Because we could not be able to come to him and say, because we are human beings, because we're men, because we're women, we can't keep these laws. When he had a body prepared and came in the person of Master Fra Muhammad and raised up from among us a man that he made walk perfectly. So that same man in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Jesus the Christ himself uttered the words, Be ye perfect, even as God is perfect. So there's no excuse for us to use the flesh and say that we can't walk perfectly with the spirit of God breathed into us. In his name, we can do all things. All praise is due to Allah. So, as we close out, I want to deal with some of these scriptures that represent our Savior, Master Far Muhammad. It says in the book of Isaiah 63, Who is this with dyed garments from Edom? Mm. 
See, the Edom that would be given, oh man, I'm just getting warmed up, family. The Edom that would be given his kingdom back. And in the book of Obadiah, it talks about the punishment of Edom. And in the book of Malachi, it talks about the hatred that Allah would have for Edom. Edom, oh man. Let me make sure this is T. I'm going to keep going. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, we moving, family. We right on time. We right on time. Edom represents the original man. He's the older brother inside the womb of Rebecca, which is really Mecca. Edom is another way of saying Adam. And one day we're going to point the camera this way where we could start off with a blank uh, whiteboard. And we can show you that the vowels are interchangeable with each other. Edom, E is interchangeable with A. And the O, another vowel, is in, interchangeable with that vowel A. Adam. So Edom being the original man with signs of rebellion, the rebellious nature of Adam is hated by Allah. All praise is due to Allah. So we want to just move further as we close out the book of Habakkuk. It says, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Mm. God came from Teman. What God came from Teman? The God of this world. But Almighty God, Allah will destroy the God of this world and this wicked world with the Holy One that would come from Mount Paran. And that is Master Father Muhammad. So we're talking about two different people at two different times, two dispensations, two different dispensations of time. It says in Romans that he would come in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. Romans 8.3. Look at these scriptures. He would come looking like the enemy. The good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 is dealing with Master Far Muhammad. It says that in 1 Thessalonians that he would come like a thief in the night. It says also in 2 Peter that Allah would come, the day of the Lord would come like a thief in the night. Mm. Oh, that, that was one more. And I have so many family, but this is just a few. Philippians chapter 2 said that, oh, I got to read that one. <laughs> we're going to close our family and we're going to go ahead and stick a pen in it like our brother Joseph, my brother Joseph says, so that we can go ahead and fill it up for another video. But as you can see, your brother is full, but we got to go to Philippians chapter 15 and I'll close out with a few more scriptures. And with these new titles that we have, we're going to tie it all together, family. Philippians hides from me better than, <laughs> better than Hebrews, but here we are. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Let's look at what it says. First, let's go to 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6, who being in the form of God, look at it, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Master Far Muhammad found it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He called us his uncle. He was, he looked like the people that the Bible refers to as the sons or daughters of men, the children of men. But he was the child of Allah 
he was the man of Allah because he had the spirit, the spirit and the blood of the original people. His father was an Arab, a black man from Arabia. So he came in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. He came in the disguise of the guilty party. All praise is due to Allah. And when he came, this is how we're going to close. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 2, it said, When I came, was there no man. And I don't have my supreme wisdom here. When I called, was there none to answer. So there was no man because there was nobody here with knowledge of self, knowledge of God, or knowledge of the enemy. And when, like the minister teaches us, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that we cannot consider ourselves men without a highly developed sense of intelligence. A direct quote from our leader, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Savior's Day 94, my favorite. We implore you to study that, study that, study that. That was my wake up message. It says in Isaiah 41, and he talked, he touched on all of these scriptures. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor. So we talked about it in the earlier part of this video, Isaiah 9, with those titles, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. So with that family, we want to close, and we ask, we ask you to deal with the lengthy uh, time but uh all praise is due to allah if there were any mistakes charge it to our minds and not our hearts we close this great video out the same way we came greeting words of peace and paradise assalamu alaikum <laughs>